morning everyone are you hearing me hello shall we start yep so uh, myself i am srin vaslu and having 10 plus years of experience i am having experience in java and java frameworks uh, around 4 years of experience on 4 years experience on hadoop and hadoop uh, administration and both hadoop development and admin and uh, last 1.6 years around around 2 years around 2 years of experience on spark and scalar development spark and scalar development along with the java integrations so i have experience on uh, no sql databases i worked on cassandra i worked on hbase i worked on redis and i have experience like kafka i have kafka with java kafka with hadoop integrations kafka with spark integration i have experience so i'm very good at streaming technologies uh, what is hadoop administration and what we are going to learn in this hadoop administration this is not complete hadoop administration here i am saying apache hadoop administration what is this apache hadoop administration what we are going to learn as part of this apache administration how it helps to uh, hadoop development and hadoop administration complete hadoop administration and spark and scalar development okay so here we are going to discuss uh, what is this apache hadoop course how it helps for us so apache hadoop first hadoop vendor is hadoop vendor is apache apache is a hadoop vendor and it is open source it is open source apache is a open source and free free means there is no need to pay any license cost there is no license cost license cost on top of apache hadoop there are some other vendors other vendors vendors like uh, cloudera cloudera harton works harton works now cloudera and harton works merged now cloudera and harton works merged adler both are different uh, vendors and we have uh, another vendor ibm ibm has its own uh, big data called big insights and we have other vendor uh, microsoft microsoft has its own uh, product called uh, hd insights and we have main popular vendor i forgot that vendor it's uh, mapper mapper is another big competitor for cloudera and hatton works and we have aws emr like this we have multiple vendors all these vendors back end is apache hadoop i said apache hadoop is open source main open source open source means they give us they give us complete source code they give complete source code complete source code of uh, apache hadoop implementation apache hadoop implementation 
so based on this uh, apache hadoop implementation they have provided uh, enterprise versions with uh, different additional features these vendors provides uh, user interface differently and administration differently they provide different user interfaces and they give us as a enterprise version so it's complete uh, apache hadoop is completely free and open source on top of this they provided some wrapper ui okay other than that every vendor back end is cloud uh, sorry back end is apache hadoop only every vendor back end is apache hadoop only okay so these are different popular vendors in the market they provided uh, up hadoop on top of apache hadoop so here yeah. as part of our apache hadoop administration first we'll discuss what is hadoop what is hadoop and what is big data what is big data so big data is very important so big data is a concept on top of big data to implement that big data we have a hadoop then we discuss we understand what is hadoop and next we start with hadoop architecture hadoop architecture before hadoop architecture we'll discuss very important concept hadoop features why we are using hadoop so there are many features there are many features because of these hadoop features people are going for hadoop so first we understand what are different hadoop features why people are going for hadoop then we discuss hadoop architecture in that hadoop architecture we discuss various various hadoop components or different hadoop components different hadoop components different hadoop components then once we understand uh, hadoop architecture next we start hadoop installation in hadoop installation we have different types of installation local mode and pseudo distribution mode pseudo distribution mode and we have fully distribution mode fully distribution mode we discuss all these modes because it is very important we discuss all these installations of apache we discuss local mode apache hadoop installation and pseudo distribution mode apache hadoop installation next one fully distribution mode apache hadoop installation so because uh, if you understand apache hadoop remaining vendor is same almost the same then additional we discussed uh, high availability concepts and different uh, other concepts monitoring concept troubleshooting concept with any one vendor so first these 10 days we concentrate on uh, installing and configuring hadoop in a single mission in local mode and pseudo distribution mode in fully distribution mode before coming to this installation part we need to discuss some prerequisites right so prerequisites we discuss prerequisites prerequisites for hadoop installation so as part of uh, this prerequisites java is mandatory java installation so we see this java installation on linux linux so before installing this linux 
we go for uh, sorry java we go for linux linux installation on top of linux we do uh, java installation next ssh installation ssh configuration and installation if required we'll discuss ssh installation so next very important one some uh, networking concepts is important networking concepts so these networking concepts i cover as part of fully distribution mode because we create multiple missions like this in hadoop in fully distribution mode we have master demands and slave demands we have some master demands and slave demands so we create master demands in separate missions and we create separate slave demands so hadoop follows master slave architecture hadoop follows what master slave architecture so we take uh, multiple masters and multiple slave missions so we take some missions as master missions so what are ma different master mission components in hadoop we discuss as part of hadoop architecture so in hadoop architecture i will explain clearly what are different components available what are what components acts as master missions and what components acts as slave missions slave missions we get a clear understanding in hadoop architecture discussion in hadoop architecture discussion i will clearly explain what are components comes under master and what are components comes under slave what is each demand responsibility how it behaves in cluster what are each each uh, component roles and responsibility in hadoop cluster so that we understand we understand in hadoop uh, hadoop setup so we are putting simple hadoop architecture but we are going to discuss very in depth very in depth so that you will understand this knowledge will helps you in hadoop development as well as hadoop administration in spark development also okay so that's why i concentrate more on this hadoop architecture explanation next hadoop installation is very important for hadoop installation we need some prerequisites okay uh, as part of networking concepts i cover for example when we discussing hadoop distribution mode pseudo distribution mode we need some commands in fully distribution mode we need some commands so at the time of discussing i'll cover what are required uh, what are uh, important network command, commands means uh, uh, linux related networking commands we discuss all those concepts as part of fully distribution mode so this installation is very very important for uh, both developer and hadoop administrator because assume you are a developer you are working in a small company small company so the, we we cannot see a separate administrator hadoop administrator so both developer acting as a developer plus admin that's a great opportunity in small companies or startup companies if you go for mnc they cannot give a chance to if you are a developer they cannot give you a chance to work on hadoop administration because hadoop administration is different to team they sit in different location they may sit with uh, along with us or they may sit with uh, different so we don't know where exactly they are so administrator doesn't know where developers are yep uh, let me explain uh, uh, srinivas so uh, testing part is very important up to now we don't have a, a separate tools we use um, first we use manual testing it's mandate next we use some automation tools like uh, uh, we have uh, j meter some other tools so we use those tools for automating hadoop development and 
uh, for spark we can use any testing framework for spark development we can use any testing framework i'll come later so as part of prerequisites i'll cover all these concepts and then next in a fully distribution mode we spend more time on fully distribution mode explanation in fully distribution mode the great advantage is in uh, hadoop is see initially we create a cluster with these missions three masters and five slave missions initially we create a cluster with three masters and five slave missions later a client business is increased we want to add multiple missions to existed cluster so initially cluster thinks that five slave missions are enough for storing data because his business is his business is less so he buy only five slave missions to store data later business is increased then he need some more missions to add to store his transaction data right so for that one if uh, in existed architecture like rdbms cluster how can we add uh, new missions to existed cluster how can we add new missions to existed cluster we need to stop or we need to put cluster in maintenance mode means in that maintenance mode no one can do any transactions then we can add new missions to cluster one minute yep uh, new missions to cluster then we can start cluster so that is the drawback of existed architecture but in hadoop cluster you can add any number of missions and you can remove any number of missions from hadoop cluster without stopping hadoop cluster or without putting hadoop cluster in maintenance mode so we are going to see different operations one minute sorry so in fully distribution mode we discuss installation installation on different different uh, linux missions uh, mostly we take five nodes five nodes sorry we take a five node mission this five nodes uh, we create in vmware so vmware is important so first prerequisite we see any virtualization software any virtualization any virtualization so as part of this virtualization we see vmware vmware setup and uh, vmware workstation installation in that vmware workstation installation how to install fully distribution mode means we take five missions in that five missions we take some missions as master missions and we take some missions as slave missions then we create fully distribution mode next here a uh, very very important one is once we uh, complete this installation we do hdfs commands hdfs commands we are going to discuss after completing all the setup so here after installation next level we are going to see how to add or remove remove missions missions are nodes nodes to cluster we are going to see all these uh, how to add and how to remove missions missions to cluster so we are going to discuss this one after that next very very important client missions so we have a uh, uh, we have a cluster we have a cluster in this cluster 
we can take any mission as a uh, client mission so this is our hadoop cluster hadoop cluster assume this cluster may be uh, this cluster may be on premise so we'll discuss what is on premise on premise means if any if a if client maintains a separate data center with their own missions, we call it as on-premise or cloud. So we have a, uh, this cluster in on-premise or cluster cloud in separate uh, in a location called UK. In London, we have a setup. So in this mission, in this cluster, they may give a one mission as a client mission or most of the times in uh, uh, real time implementation they cannot give e any one mission as a client mission in cluster in a cluster they cannot give master or slave missions as a client missions for that one what they will do they will create a separate uh, client missions they may create one client mission or multiple client missions they may create one client mission are multiple client missions assume they created two client missions this is client one client one in this client one also we install hadoop in this client one also we install hadoop client two client two two then as a developers we are located developers or administrators we are presented in different locations different locations we have our own mission then they give us they give us these client missions urls so we execute our commands or applications we execute our commands or applications in client missions any client mission you can use any client mission so if you are executing commands in client mission means these commands are going to execute in these commands are going to execute in cluster so we are thinking that we are executing in this mission but commands are going to send to cluster okay so we see how to set up clients so here yeah, i am going to explain how to install client mission so this client or we call it as edge node some people call it as edge node or some people call it as gateway node we'll discuss all these concepts in our hadoop architecture once again so that you will understand what are these edge nodes or client missions so here i will show you how to set up windows client sorry linux client linux hadoop client and how to set up windows windows hadoop client so if you have a windows machine then you can install uh, hadoop in your windows machine i will show you how to install in both hadoop and uh, in windows and linux so it preferably we you go for linux most of the times windows are hadoop client missions so we install hadoop for this any one mission we take two client missions in two client missions one we take as linux in that linux we install hadoop then we make this mission as a client mission to make this mission as a client mission what we need to do that's very important right so without doing that configuration settings this mission cannot act as a client mission to this cluster right yes or no so we are going to do that configuration parts that configuration part in client mission so we install windows and we install linux in that windows we are not going to install windows operating system i will show you only how to install linux operating system in your windows mission how to install hadoop and how to make this mission as a client mission to hadoop cluster then here we need some 
important if you make this mission as a client then we get a very important concept called here prerequisites user management hadoop uh, user management so this concept we co i cover as a separate concept so that you will uh, get clear clarity so user hadoop user management hadoop user management and uh, authentication uh, this one uh, acl access control list so user management and group management user management and group management group management plus we are going to discuss access control list how to give access to users so we are creating multiple clients right so we want to give access permission on different file system in hadoop cluster this is responsibility of hadoop administrator yep uh, no worries so sujit i will clearly explain this is apache hadoop so that we have everything in our control so if you are taking minimum of minimum of uh, five missions so minimum it requires 10 gb so you are taking see you want to create a five node missions five node missions i said right here five node mission five node missions assume if you are creating five node mission you need 5 into 2 10 gb ram so you have a 8 gb ram then create a three node mission three node mission okay so minimum each mission required 2 gb ram it is not for hadoop minimum operating system is required 2 gb okay so that i will explain as part of prerequisite so that you will get clear clarity okay next we'll discuss user management and group management so that you will understand different how to assign permission to different users so developers we have a multiple developers right and we have multiple administrators so for everyone we create a separate users here then we give permissions to hadoop cluster so we create a different users here and we give url ip address of this mission and username and password to these developers and administrators then when they execute any commands in this mission hadoop commands or anything that reflects to this hadoop cluster right so they need permissions for that one we are going to learn hadoop user management and group management activity plus how to assign uh, specific user permissions so permissions we discuss so simply we can say i divide this one i will say how to how to give permissions so simply we can say permissions permissions and access control list we we are going to discuss permissions uh, user permissions and access control list user permissions and access control list we discuss next after completing this discussion we are going to discuss hadoop ecosystems installation hadoop ecosystems hadoop ecosystems are frameworks hadoop frameworks hadoop frameworks installation Hadoop frameworks installation. So we install this Hadoop frameworks not in Hadoop cluster. Not in Hadoop cluster. We install these Hadoop ecosystems in Hadoop client missions. In Hadoop client missions, we install Hadoop ecosystems or Hadoop frameworks. Then, as part of this Hadoop ecosystems installation, we are going to install PIC. We are going to install high 
and we are going to install mysql then we are going to install hive metastore as metastore as uh, mysql what is this metastore concept i will explain in uh, hadoop installation part so that uh, what is the need of this mysql and what is this metastore how to make this mysql as a metastore we are going to discuss as part of this complete hive this is very very important for both developer as hadoop administrator next one uh, some uh, other ecosystems like uh, flume scoop scoop and we are going to discuss hdfs commands this complete i will try to cover these all concepts in 10 hours i'm i'm trying uh, 10 hours but uh, 10 hours may not sufficient for this discussing all these components so max it uh, max I, I cannot waste your time so max i will finish 15 hours max i will try to cover all those concepts in 15 hours okay so max you can expect five more hours i will try uh, to finish uh, in 10 hours means 10 days if it is not maximum it will take 15 days 15 hours means 15 days 15 days uh, if possible saturday sunday i will take extra time if possible so we have multiple people in this uh, in this workshop so based on your convenience time i will propose time so then if all all of you okay then we go for that time and we spend more time in weekends okay so minimum of 10 to 15 days so 10 to 15 days if we take me weekends more time then it would reduce to 10 days or 12 days okay so once you complete this hadoop apache hadoop administration once you complete once you complete apache hadoop administration apache hadoop administration then you can go for then you can go for big data developer big data developer then learn hadoop development hadoop development plus spark plus kafka so for learning kafka hadoop development this is not mandate what i'm saying once you complete if you want to go for big development big data developer you can choose these kind of uh, technologies no sql for development or or you can go for hadoop administration hadoop administration so as part of hadoop administration it's recommended go uh, either cloudera cloudera or hortonworks it's recommended but i said both vendors are merged right so we are you can go for cloudera cloudera complete administration because here 10 hours is not sufficient to become a Hadoop administrator, you need in depth knowledge of uh, uh, any one vendor. In real time, they may use Cloudera, they may use Hortonworks, they may use Mapper, they may use uh, any other IBM, Microsoft, any other vendor. Vendors uh, Hadoop, uh, Hadoop system. So you can learn any vendor. Okay so it will helps this apache hadoop administration will give you in-depth idea 
so that you can learn any of uh, big data development or hadoop administration so both are having same uh, currently both are having same demand same demand so currently we cannot say uh, hadoop has good demand development has good demand hadoop administration has less demand no both having huge demand if you are a tester if you are a tester go for hadoop testing hadoop testing but currently industry not using separate uh, separate tools for hadoop testing most of the times we go for manual testing or some other tools like jmeter and for spark we use uh, any automation framework it may be uh, selenium it may be anything you can use for spark spark is like a uh, java kind of development so we can use java or we can use scala or we can use python or we can use r language so for that languages whatever the automation tool you you are using you can use same automation tool for spark application development okay but hadoop development we go for most of the times we go for manual testing so this administration concept will help you to enter into big data development or hadoop administration or hadoop testing for this what is the prerequisite knowledge prerequisite knowledge prerequisites to learn apache hadoop apache hadoop administration what are the prerequisites required for to learn apache hadoop administration first i am saying there is or no need to know no need to know any specific specific language first important point no need to know any language computer language any computer language it may be java it may be any other no need to know any language so we are completely dealing with apache hadoop administration basic knowledge of basic knowledge of basic knowledge of linux basic knowledge of linux if you know linux it's a uh, very advantage next one if you have if you have linux administration linux administration it is add on advantage add on advantage if you have optional that's what i'm saying these are optional optional if you have a devops knowledge devops it's add on advantage add on advantage instead of installing all these systems manually in assume we are installing five missions right you can automate this complete process by using devops tool add an advantage it is optional <coughs> sorry next one if you have any cloud any cloud means aws or azure azure or gcp google cloud platform any other it is add an advantage add an advantage so 
so it is also optional so if you have all these skill sets whatever we are doing as part of this virtualization you can install if you know cloud you can set up a same thing in cloud if you know devops whatever we are doing manual setups manual configurations then you can automate by using any devops tool so most of the times these networking concepts and uh, we are installing hadoop in uh, linux system right this linux admin basic knowledge will give you more advantage this linux administration will help you lot in a hadoop administration that's what i'm saying all the these are optional first it is not required any computer language is not required knowing computer language is not required because we are not writing any programs we are not writing any processing classics right so for apache hadoop administration it's not required to know any computer language no need to know java no need to know python no need to know scala any language but linux basics will help you lot linux basics will help you lot i will share uh, uh, youtube link mine i created around 12 uh, 12 videos if you get chance uh, if you get time try go through that videos so that uh, before installation if you go through that 12 videos it will help you lot in our apache hadoop discussion i have already created a playlist uh, around 12 videos are there so that's enough for your apache hadoop administration even this cloudera administration also cloudera administration also okay next so today i am going to stop uh, at this point because tomorrow we are going to start from scratch from scratch so that if any new people will uh, enter they also understand because today we are discussing completely what we are going to discuss as part of this complete workshop so this complete workshop is free okay once you complete this workshop you can choose your career as big data developer or big data administrator or you can uh, choose direct to spark and scalar development also anything big data developer means people are people will expect this skill if you have this skill you will get more chances if you are no if you are going for up hadoop administration they will expect the first apache hadoop administration then if you understand this one learning any vendor administration is nothing you can easily learn someone asked a question yep uh, do you offer spark scalar development yes i am offering i am offering both hadoop development and spark and scalar development and i am uh, dealing with uh, kafka no sql development for this i am going to give java java sql trainings okay so my skill set first main skill set is hadoop hadoop development last four years onwards i am working on hadoop development i worked on all hadoop ecosystems all hadoop ecosystems except except map produce last four year four year onwards i didn't get a chance to work on map produce i am a very good developer because i have complete java prior to hadoop hadoop development i am a java developer around 6 years i worked in java development from 2006 onwards i am giving trainings on java development 
but i didn't get chance to work on this map reduce i got a chance to integrate hadoop ecosystems with java so i worked as a java plus hadoop development then i worked as a spark developer from last to two years spark development and i worked on no sql developer so hadoop developer means we use no sql also no sql development in no sql development i got chance on work on cassandra initial projects i worked on cassandra later i worked on hbase and i have experience on redis redis is we used this redis for java projects java projects it's in memory database so we used it as a uh, java projects we used redis and i worked on adobe administration adobe admin i worked in one of the startup company in that startup company i have this skill so they asked me to work as a support for adobe administration they taken uh, so, uh, services from third party vendor uh, with them i worked as uh, uh, hadoop administration so i have very good knowledge on apache hadoop administration i set up this apache hadoop uh, on virtualizations virtualizations i worked virtualization softwares most of the times i worked on uh, vmware vmware and on premise on premise also we used uh, virtualizations virtualization and next i worked on aws cloud aws cloud we set up our cluster in aws cloud and also i have experience on with this adobe administration i have experience on vendor cloud era cloud era and apache hadoop apache hadoop plus mapper mapper i didn't work on hatton works Artonworks also similar. So now Artonworks is uh, merged with the Cloudera. So there is no separate Artonworks. You see only Cloudera. So most of the Adobe market captured by Cloudera only. Some people using Mapper. So if you understand Cloudera, other vendors is nothing. First, if you understand Apache Hadoop, other any vendor is nothing because on top of hadoop apache hadoop only others vendors created right so first this knowledge is important apache hadoop administration is important if you understand apache hadoop administration learning other vendors is nothing okay so i am offering like uh, courses like later uh, i am offering uh, hadoop development Hadoop development and NoSQL development and I am cover I am handling Kafka development as part of Kafka development I am giving Kafka admin Kafka admin knowledge so I cover around uh, thirty percent of uh, 30% of Kafka admin, Kafka admin uh, knowledge. Kafka admin knowledge. Okay. Next, I'm covering uh, Spark, Spark and Scalar development. Spark and Scalar development. So these are my uh, training. So it's not mandated. So based on your requirement, you can uh, join in any other. 
okay my mobile number is you can send emails regarding any technical or anything to this mail id masadup gmail.com and you can call me on this number reply it 5182309 this is sorry instead of this one call on this number 8919913 one double three nine eight okay you can contact on uh, on this number any technical related or anything you can send email to this mail id so tomorrow we freshly start our apache hadoop administration part okay so instead of starting five minutes and uh, stopping here uh, if any new people uh, intimate your friends if any of your friends interested intimate them so that they will get a gain because it's completely free if they it will helps them why i am offering for this one is i am very much interested to about this hadoop because i'm say i'm i'll say two minutes i'll say uh, why i like this hadoop hadoop so before this hadoop development i am a java developer once I started learning Hadoop development, I thrown all my Hadoop materials and Hadoop documents, everything books in garbage. But still, Java is not leaving me because we are, I am working as a big data developer. So big data developer means finally, uh, once we store data, once we process data, that data has to use by someone, right? that someone middle we are write java applications okay so still uh, i am working with hadoop with hadoop and spark with java okay so that's it for today uh, tomorrow we freshly start from what is big data what is big data so we discuss all these concepts. I will share this uh, syllabus and uh, everyday notes to your email ID. Okay. So if you if you not get any uh, material, please send your uh, test mail to this mail ID. If you not get uh, any email, please send me a test mail to this mail ID so that uh, I will forward this one. I will create separate uh, drive link. Uh, I will keep all these documents in the, uh, the drive link. I will give permission to access that drive. Okay. Yep. Tomorrow, same time. Tomorrow, we have 7 o'clock. 7 to 8. It's fixed time, uh, Jason. Okay. Okay. Thanks for attending uh, this workshop. We will continue tomorrow. If any one of your friends interested, please let them to join this uh, workshop. Okay. Thank you. We'll meet uh, tomorrow. Yep. Uh, do you have any questions? on today's topic or if you want to uh, get any additional information yep uh, i sent uh, i think uh, whatever registration plan uh, today we have a continuation all today i started both hadoop uh, kafka and java i already sent a link uh, i think uh, uh, go to that link and uh, did you re if you registered you can directly log into that one
no need no need chandra so tomorrow class we'll get in hadoop architecture i'll give you a clear idea chandra yep thank you we'll meet uh, tomorrow Yep. Uh, in previous class, we discussed about what we are going to cover as part of Apache admin, right? As part of Apache, Apache Hadoop admin. So this course will help you a lot in your Hadoop development and Hadoop administration, Spark uh, development. Okay, it's uh, very important. So we we are going to discuss all these concepts. This is very important for uh, every developer, every uh, Hadoop developer and uh, Hadoop administrator, and any big data framework developer. Okay. So first, as part of this one, let's start uh, Hadoop. So first, we are going to discuss what is Hadoop. Everyone knows uh, Hadoop, but it's better to know what is Hadoop. Anyone having any idea about what is Hadoop? So it is a big data framework, right? It is a big data framework, big data framework. What is big data? What is big data? So we are here. We are hearing the term big data, big data. What is big data? So big data means it is a huge volume of data, huge volume of data, volume of data, which cannot be stored, which cannot be stored and processed, processed using traditional technologies traditional uh, technologies technologies uh, like rdbms and application programmings application programmings within given time within given time means a short time so within short time if you want to process huge volumes of data by using rdbms and application programming it's not possible okay so to resolve this big data issues we have hadoop so first two problems problems with the big data is Big data. First one, storage. Storage. There is no, there is no technology. There is no technology which can store, which can store unlimited data, which can store unlimited, unlimited data. And next one, processing. There is no technology. There is no technology 
which can process within given time which can process within given time within given time so these are two problems so to resolve this problem we have hadoop hadoop introduced to introduced to resolve above problems to resolve storage storage and processing so hdfs is a file system which can store unlimited data which can store unlimited data first important point uh, hdfs file system can store unlimited data and next one map reduce map reduce is a parallel processing system is a parallel parallel processing system processing framework it can process it can process what data parallelly it can process process data parallelly so that we get response very faster <clears throat> so that we get response very faster not only map reduce based on map reduce there are some other algorithms are implemented by hadoop framework so those fra those uh, other frameworks or ecosystems process your data faster with a simple and easy implementation okay so very important one why people are going for hadoop that is very important so that we understand uh, so that we understand why people are going for uh, hadoop system so first important one let's understand what are hadoop features what are hadoop features why people are going for hadoop first important feature is cost effective first important feature cost effective cost effective so instead of hadoop instead of hadoop if you go for rdbms rdbms for your storage rdbms in rdbms assume we are taking the popular database oracle oracle is a licensed licensed oracle is a licensed every year we have to renewal every year we have to renewal every year we have to renewal this is first important point next oracle requires oracle requires specialized hardware specialized hardware it cannot uh, run 24 by 7 in normal hardware because if hardware fails if hardware fails it take too much time to start your oracle servers it's not that much easy to start oracle cluster will take longer time not only oracle any rdbms servers will take longer time to start because complete data is resides in rdbms system right so uh, it requires specialized hardware hardware cost is high hardware cost is high
coming to hadoop coming to hadoop hadoop is open source is open source and it is free it is free no license cost no license cost no license cost first important feature is no license cost if you go for rdbms every year we have to renewal it it's in crores not like uh, normal softwares it is in crores and requires a specialized hardware but here hadoop works on hadoop works on works on commodity hardware commodity hardware hadoop works on commodity hardware means normal hardware so commodity hardware commodity hardware means it's a pc less than commodity hardware commodity less than uh, server hardware okay so around 20 times it's less than server hardware approximately uh, i am saying assume assumption its uh, cost is compared to server hardware very low server hardware is cost is very high so that's what if you go for oracle and if you go for some other ibm uh, db2 kind of uh, data storages they give us some certified hardwares so if you install these databases on, on that certified hardware they give reliability means that hardware gives reliability but commodity hardware and normal hardware cannot give reliability so failures are compared to server hardware commodity hardware failure is high but how it resolves this uh, failures we see okay so it's very important so first important feature we don't have a license cost license cost is free no need to pay single rupee for uh, software and next one uh, hardware cost is it works on normal hardware so hardware cost also very less next important feature is large cluster of nodes large cluster of nodes large cluster of nodes if you go for the popular rdbms rdbms if you go for rdbms so oracle cluster size oracle cluster size maximum max 256 missions 256 missions in a cluster if you go warehousing databases like uh, terra data terra data uh, vertica hp vertica and if you go for netizer they have a limitation maximum 5 to 12 missions 5 to 12 missions in a cluster so rdbms has a limitation rdbms has a limitation rdbms has a limitation but but hadoop doesn't have limitation hadoop does not have limitation does not have a limitation we can take we can take n number of missions we can take n number of missions n number of missions in a cluster 
in a cluster there is no limitation we can take n number of missions in a cluster so it's a very good advantage so that only it providing unlimited storage so because of this reason so hadoop hadoop supports what hadoop supports hadoop supports large cluster large cluster and it offers it offers more computing power more computing power because we are taking multiple missions right and huge volumes of storage and huge volumes of storage yes or no because of it supporting large cluster it provides more computing power and huge volumes of storage this is very important feature of uh, hadoop next very very important feature very important feature parallel processing parallel processing very very important feature of hadoop cluster is parallel uh, not hadoop cluster hadoop parallel processing hadoop process pa data parallelly hadoop process data parallelly hadoop process data parallelly so we have map reduce framework map reduce framework which can process which can process data parallelly which can process data parallelly how it process data parallelly can anyone tell me how it process data parallelly friends how it process data parallelly no jay shankar saying local no different core uh, yours uh, good uh, and uh, gathers results hmm. blocks okay multiple slaves okay so some some are saying divide data into blocks super so first we have to understand very important is because of hdfs file system right your data is split into multiple blocks and placed into different missions so we are uh, let me uh, draw the diagram so that everyone in same pace so this is our hadoop cluster assume we have a uh, five node mission five node mission five node mission so user wants to store some file user wants to store some file maybe assume we are taking 300 mb file user wants to store 300 mb file so first client approaches master mission so this is master so currently we don't know what is master mission uh, process name we will discuss master mission process name these are slave missions slave missions so master mission prepares metadata prepares metadata metadata by dividing this file into multiple blocks so note from hadoop 2.x from hadoop 2.x block size is 
block size is 128 MB. 128 MB. So 300 by 300 by 128 equal to three blocks. Okay, 128 MB by three uh, three we get to three blocks. So here it prepares a plan how to place that file into how to place that one into this Hadoop cluster. Then here assume block one is placed here, block two is placed here, block three is placed here. So whenever you run processing algorithm, it process your data parallelly because your processing algorithm instantiated in three locations. Your processing algorithm instantiated in three locations, your data process parallelly. So this is very important feature. So data may be any size. Data may be any size any size response is same response is same that is it process very faster it process very faster how it process very faster just now we discussed because of large cluster we have more computing power Yes or no? Because of large cluster, we have a more computing power. So it process very faster. So your data is processed very faster. So this is very, very important feature of Hadoop. Next one. And very, very, very important feature. Every feature is very, very important. So whatever the feature we are discussing, every feature is very important. So distributed data, distributed data. This is very important feature of Hadoop. Distributed data. What is this distributed data? Just now we discussed, if you place data into Hadoop cluster, your data is split into multiple blocks and placed into different missions, okay? data is not stored in a single mission not stored in a single mission single mission like existed architectures like existed architectures existed architecture data is not stored in a single mission like existed architecture data is split into multiple blocks data is uh, splits into splits into multiple multiple chunks called blocks called blocks and placed into are uh, are and stored in are placed or stored in different missions across the cluster different different missions different missions in a cluster you are getting right team so your data is not placed in a single mission your data is splits into multiple blocks and spans across the clusters are distributed across the clusters stores are distributes across the clusters are you understanding right okay so next very 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 important feature so every feature is very 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 important this feature is very 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 important feature automatic failover automatic failover automatic failover management 
you cannot see this feature in existed architectures what we do as a administrator we have to take and care so one of our friend question is what if cluster is huge and data size is less in that case we we will not go for hadoop right uh, friend if data size is uh, less first of all we cannot buy cluster we cannot create huge volumes of cluster yes or no so we uh, we are going hadoop means our business is business having huge volumes of data first of all hadoop is free so whether your data is small or big hadoop is free software side we discussed cost effective feature and second important feature we spend less amount for commodity hardware not like specialized hardware so one more advantage in previous class i told you can add any number of missions you can remove any number of missions at run time without stopping without putting your hadoop cluster in maintenance mode then why do we create large cluster when we have a small data we create only small cluster right if your data grows then we increase cluster size and we don't have a issue to add any number of missions at run time so we have lot of features uh, friend okay so automatic failover management see we have a we have a concept called replication 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 by default by default by default hadoop maintains hadoop maintains three copies three copies of each block three copies of each block by default hadoop maintains three copies of each block right so by default it maintains three copies of each block so file one size is file one size is 300 mb 300 mb so if you split 300 mb by 128 mb uh, we get how many blocks three blocks three blocks yes or no each block each block replicated three times so finally your cluster contain nine blocks so if you last one block of one block you can read data from another block so assume it is maintaining this block this block three places block one maintains in block one has three blocks so one in this mission two maybe in other missions so we have to remember one important point so so we have a three blocks right for file we have a three blocks each block replicated three times in hadoop cluster if one mission is down we can access data from other missions it is configurable this replication is configurable this replication is configurable configurable as a administrator as a hadoop administrator uh, based on our ha hardware 
we configure this parameter as a hadoop administrator uh, based on our uh, hadoop uh, hardware we configure this replication factor see uh, your hardware is commodity hardware so chances is failure is high then we configure three your hardware is less than commodity hardware capacity means normal hardware you are using hadoop will support normal hardware also it can support any hardware it is not strict to particular hardware one minute it is not strict to particular hardware okay so you created hadoop cluster with normal hardware so you are thinking your hardware failures are high you you are thinking hardware failures may high may may high then instead of three copies you want to make it as five copies you want to make it as five copies then you can uh, configure that parameter in replication parameter in one of the configuration file in our installation time i will explain what are different configuration files are available how to configure so this apache hadoop administration is we are not discussing brief we are discussing in depth once you uh, this course is completed you will get very good knowledge of hadoop i will give 100% guarantee after completing this course you will feel so my uh, one important request i have one channel c family computers c family computers uh, is my website so here i am updating new batches and i have one more youtube channel so this is my youtube channel so here you will see uh, different playlist so we have different videos here uh, if you get chance please subscribe our uh, our channel and please uh, share this channel information to your friends so that i will get more uh, subscribers to this channel okay i have currently i have less users in this channel so i have only 3000 plus users so if you share this channel information it will helps to your friends as well as if i uh, record any new new topics i will upload in this channel you also get new updates related to hadoop are related to spark are related to anything uh, most of the times so big data java related and real time tools related i am uploading in this channel so you also get notified and you if it is useful for you you can go and view that videos so my request is uh, if uh, please subscribe this channel and please share this channel information to your friends so that they will subscribe i will get more subscribers it will help me okay yep let's continue so uh, we have different configuration files in one of the configuration file we will uh, do this uh, we will increase or decrease replication factor size okay yep yep next very important future yeah we didn't discuss right so uh, we didn't discuss automatic uh, failover management continuation in hadoop what this will do uh, if any system is failure if any uh, system is failure in hadoop cluster assume this this mission is failure 
but whatever the blocks presented in this mission have a replication in other missions right we can access our data from other missions we can access data from other missions okay so next very important feature is data locality optimization this is very 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 important feature friends data locality locality optimization data locality optimization what is this data locality optimization what is this data locality optimization see coming to existed architecture existed architecture like uh, three tier architecture let's say three tier architecture three tier architecture so in three tier architecture we have user interface uh, user interface and middle layer middle layer and next we have database 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 layer so this we call presentation presentation uh, layer we call it as presentation layer and this one we call it as a business business layer business processing layer or middle middleware and this one is storage layer persistence layer persistence layer so in three tier architecture we have uh, different layers this is one user interface one user interface so here user requested some data this user requested some data assume sales data you want sales data sales data of uh, hyderabad city hyderabad city sales data of hyderabad city then this request goes to middle layer this middle layer communicates with database layer database layer prepares this query prepares this uh, hyderabad city related query and sends this request to presentation layer presentation layer may be any database maybe a oracle database maybe mysql database maybe db2 database any database so this one this one sends this sales data to sales data back to sales data back to this middle layer assume assume we have a 10 gb data assume we have 10 gb data here 10 gb sales data 10 db sales data on this 10 gb sales data this 10 gb sales data comes here here we are applying on this 10 gb data on this 10 gb data we are applying business logic we are applying business logic we are applying what business logic then finally result after applying business logic we get some result right that result we are sending back to user interface this result may be very small so on this 10 gb data we are applying processing logic then we are returning result to the user can you guess what is the size of this business logic uh, uh, application most of the times mb right most of the times even if you write uh, thousands of lines of uh, java code or dot net code or other programming language code if you write uh, thousands of lines also it is less than mbs only max mb yes or no right maximum mb sizes 
but you instead of loading this programs in data location what we are doing we are loading data into application location we are applying processing and we are returning to result but in our hadoop cluster what will happen you know in hadoop cluster we have a data in different locations we have a data in different locations we have a data in different locations assume we have a data in this format we have a data in this format our client wants to wants to sales data client wants sales data sales data of hyderabad city sales data of hyderabad city so there is one more master there is one more master called uh, job tracker or resource manager in hadoop cluster this will take in care of taking read uh, processing request and what this master do is this processing request is instantiated processing request logic is instantiated in different missions data is not moving to application location our application is moving to data location and process your data parallelly data may be 3mb data may be 10gb data may be tb data may be petabytes data may be jettabytes exabytes your application is going to data location not data is coming to application location this concept is called data locality optimization so this concept this concept uh, gives what parallel processing so you are understanding right so data locality optimization means applications application instances instances are created are created in data location in data location data location and process and process data parallelly process data parallelly data process data parallelly so that so that we are reducing what network bandwidth so if you observe database servers may be resides in different locations right database server may be different location application server may be different location so to transfer this data from application location to data location sorry data location to application location it require more bandwidth right more bandwidth and it is burden on a single mission to process this data yes or no but in our uh, hadoop application is going to application instance is created in data locations so if you your data has multiple uh, data is located in multiple missions your application instances created in every mission in data presented missions then process your data parallelly then result is going to save okay next very 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 important feature so if you start discussing each feature of uh, hadoop every feature of hadoop is very very important that's why hadoop is very important hadoop is popular because of these features only one important point uh, i'm notifying you is uh, why is hadoop is new architecture people are thinking is hadoop is new architecture no it is not new architecture it is it resolves existed architecture problems in new way you are understanding right it resolving 
problems of existed architectures in new way one your data is distributed across the cluster and your processing is your process your application processing logics are created in data locations and process your data parallelly so it is uh, it is not a new architecture it is same as existed architecture but resolving existed architecture problems in new way so uh, if you are a hadoop developer or if you are a uh, hadoop administrator you cannot feel it's a new architecture so you are a other uh, administrator means assume you are a database administrator or you are a linux administrator or you you are a other uh, software administrator learning hadoop administration is nothing because you already done all the task earlier in another another softwares and moreover this hadoop reduces administrator responsibilities administrator is mandatory hadoop administrator is mandatory but it reducing your tasks most of the times internally it performs automatic failover kind of automatic failover management right these kind of features lot of features are available in hadoop so that uh, it reduces administration burdens on administrators whatever existed softwares having problems it resolves that problems so that it reduces administrator uh, roles okay so coming to this seventh important point heterogeneous heterogeneous cluster heterogeneous cluster what is this heterogeneous cluster so most of the pe people think that uh, ma no one using map reduce nowadays so why do we want to learn hadoop but finally we are uh, forgetting one important feature we need huge volumes of we need a data store which can store huge volumes of data without data how you can process your data there is no way and that too it has to support parallel processing yes or no data first data store must support huge volumes of data or unlimited data and it has to support parallelism then only we can write parallel processing applications so without a storage, we cannot think about a processing. So without data, what is the use of processing logic? So data store is important. Hadoop is important. Hadoop is very, very important. On that data, you can do anything. Right? So Hadoop is very important. So on that Hadoop, people are using Sparks, people are using uh, machine learning, people are using uh, AI, people are using IoTs, people are using data science algorithms on top of data. So data store is very important and there is no other competitor for our Hadoop because Hadoop is free. Who will offer less than free? no one right if you give completely free and that to open source apache giving complete to source code of hadoop if you want to customize you can customize your own way we have all facilities and this is not from normal vendor normal uh, distributor it is from apache friendly community 
AFC, Apache Friends Community. Okay, so a lot of features are there. <laughs> That's why people uh, using Hadoop. With Hadoop, any processing will help. So development means with Hadoop, we need other processing algorithms. But Hadoop administrator, this Apache Hadoop administration plus any other vendor Hadoop administration. is important okay let's discuss about heterogeneous cluster let me save this diagram <coughs> heterogeneous cluster i have a masters i have master missions and i have slave missions I have slave missions. I have slave missions. Let me take only one master instead of taking multiple masters. Master mission. Master mission. I take an Sun Solaris operating system. Sun Solaris operating system and Sun hardware. Sun hardware. So now it is Oracle. Now it is Oracle. So this uh, both uh, operating system Solaris and Sun hardware is now it is from Oracle. For master mission, I used Sun Solaris operating system and Sun hardware. First to slave mission, I used IBM AIX. AIX operating system and I used IBM hardware. IBM hardware. For this mission, I used HP UX operating system, Unix operating system, and HP hardware. HP hardware. For this system, I used Red Hat Linux. Red Hat Linux and I used Intel hardware. Intel hardware. For this system, I used CentOS, CentOS operating system and AMD hardware. AMD hardware. You are getting right. So it is not mandatory to take all missions operating systems are same all missions hardwares are same in hadoop cluster in hadoop cluster in hadoop cluster you can take you can take any operating system any operating system and any hardware any hardware okay so you can take any operating system and any hardware for different missions in adobe cluster it's supporting you can take any hardware any operating system it is not mandatory it is not mandatory it is not mandatory not mandatory not mandatory to take all missions all missions in a cluster in a cluster with same operating system with same operating system and the same hardware same hardware but if you go for oracle kind of uh, databases they will give certified hardware certified operating system if you take this operating system if you take this hardware then your hadoop cl your cluster will uh, reliable if you go for sap sap they give us certified hardware 
and certified operating system so if you want to install sap you need to use this operating system you need to use this hardware but we don't have such kind of restrictions in our hadoop you can take anything even for different missions you can take different operating systems different hardwares you are getting right so next a very 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 important feature very important feature scalability scalability so don't think we need scale to we need scale to scale hadoop cluster we need natra scale to scale hadoop cluster right scalability means can anyone tell me what is scalability yep horizontal okay any other capacity increase superb any other capacity decrease scalability we we can increase right any size yes you are almost all are you correct but not decreasing increasing we can add we can add any number of missions to cluster we can add any number of missions number of missions to cluster unlimited storage unlimited storage to achieve unlimited storage we can add n number of missions right so scalability is very important yep you also uh, someone says decreasing yes that is scalability we can increase or decrease so another important scalability means we can we can add or remove any number of missions to cluster we can add remove any number of missions to cluster main advantage advantage is here uh, compared to compared to other uh, systems compared to other systems other systems no need to no need to stop cluster no need to stop cluster and no need to no need to put hadoop in maintenance mode hadoop in maintenance maintenance mode like others other other systems means rdbms like rdbms we can add n number of missions we can add n number of missions to hadoop cluster without to stopping without to putting hadoop cluster in maintenance mode we can add remove hadoop cluster practically we see this in our uh, fully distribution mode we will add some missions to existed cluster and we can stop some missions to existed cluster how your data going to arrange in uh, uh, hadoop cluster we see this practically i will show this feature practically so that you will get a clear understanding you will feel okay 
so that's it for today but tomorrow we are going to see hadoop architecture if any of your friends uh, wants to learn this apache hadoop administration let them to uh, join in tomorrow class okay so that's it for today uh, if you have any queries you can ask me otherwise we will continue tomorrow yep we can create uh, security also chandra we have a security uh, systems we can create uh, security yep i'll tell some algorithms uh, different security algorithms later but as part of our course we are not discussing security here so i will create separate course uh, for cloud era okay in that cloud era administration uh, i will cover security how to implement security so security is very important you are uh, correct chandra so security is very very important to concern so how to add updates how to add uh, how to provide security for your data so first level security i said uh, acl access control list user management and group management there we provide first level security chandra next level we provide data level security i uh, will discuss it in uh, one of the vendor uh, cloud era administration i will create that uh, after completing our apache hadoop i will schedule uh, cloud era uh, around 30 hours class 30 hours not like uh, 10 hours 30 hours just minimal fee not for only for uh, i need uh, any one uh, cloud system to explain that one because minimum cloud era requires 8 gb ram okay so i will plan cloud era administration with 30 hours then you can learn from that cloud era administration you will i will show you different security systems in that classes okay yep that's it for today we'll meet to tomorrow yep ssd is a drives drive type so hard disk drive type ssds are very faster data data input output to write that input output operations are very faster but if you go for uh, spark kind of uh, application processing we don't we are not going to process in ssd drives everything is presented in in memory so processing happen in in memory in that case you whether you have ssd or not no matter processing happen in memories okay uh, can you please send your email ids just text me to this email id masadup at gmail.com i will forward these documents to you so i am expecting all of you send your email ids to this email id okay Thank you. We'll meet uh, tomorrow. Yep. Uh, today we see Adobe architecture.
So first we have to remember one important point is Hadoop follows master save architecture. Master slave architecture. Master slave architecture. In master slave architecture, some missions access masters and some missions access slave missions. Right? So in master slave architecture, master uh, slave architecture, some missions act as master and some missions act as slave missions. So this is master mission and these are slave, miss, slave missions. Slaves, yes or no? So here problem is we have only one single master, yes or no? If this master is failed, we lost uh, communication, uh, communication. So master receives all requests. Master receives all requests so to resolve this problem we have same architecture only master slave but here we take another master another master so this one we call first master we call as active master active active master and second one we call it as passive master passive master so if the active master receives a request if any request comes active master receives a request in this existed architecture what will happen active master is responsible to receive request if active master goes down if any problem occurred in the active master mission maybe network issue maybe power issue maybe hardware issue maybe operating system issue any other issue if active master goes down passive master become active master passive master become active master active master passive master become active master then this active master now starts receiving request from clients active uh, this is responsible to receive request uh, from clients so this is existed architecture So this is existed architecture same as this existed architecture Hadoop also follows master slave architecture Hadoop also follows master slave architecture in Hadoop architecture in Hadoop architecture in Hadoop architecture there are five demands there are five demands. There are five demands. One, name node, name node, and two, data node, data node, and three, secondary name node, secondary name node. Secondary name node uh, for job tracker. So this is until until Hadoop one point x Hadoop one point x or resource manager 
resource manager from 2.x from from hadoop 2.x hadoop 2.x from hadoop 2.x resource manager is responsible resource manager is introduced and job tracker is deprecated and fifth one task tracker until hadoop 1.x node manager node manager from hadoop 2.x so they replaced task tracker roles with node manager so these are five demands involved in hadoop architecture let's uh, draw the diagram and understand hadoop architecture so first it is highly recommended to start all master demands in separate machines it is highly recommended to start all master demands in separate machines job tracker or resource manager name node next one secondary name node secondary name node and we can take n number of slave machines n number of slave machines So here we can take data node and task tracker or node manager. Task tracker or node manager. So in Hadoop architecture, some important notes I am writing. It is highly recommended. It is highly recommended to take each master daemon, each sorry, each master daemon on separate mission on separate 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 mission separate mission so this is first important so what are master demands here these are master demands master demands masters these are saves saves okay so it is highly recommended to take master demands on separate machines yep correct so so one of our friend asking what is demand what is demand so already we discussed uh, demand demand is a process Demand is a process or program which always runs in which always which always runs in background which always runs in background 
so uh, daemon is a process or program which always runs in background so whenever we uh, run our uh, pro whenever we start our hadoop system hadoop software internally five processes runs in background okay so it is recommended to uh, highly recommended to take master demands on separate machine one more important point i am writing until until hadoop 1.x hadoop 1.x uh, we can take we can take only one only one name node only one name node so this architecture so this architecture this architecture this architecture is called this architecture is called single point of failure single point of uh, failure so if master node is fail if master node is fail then we have to wait until master node boot as a hadoop administrator we have to resolve the problem of um, uh, name node then uh, we can then process will continue this is the problem until hadoop 1.x but from but from hadoop 2.x from hadoop 2.x but from hadoop 2.x apache apache introduced apache introduced high availability high availability high availability called ha high availability concept from hadoop 2.x apache introduced high availability then you can take multiple name nodes like previous architecture i explained right we have active master and passive master yes or no like uh, that kind of architecture was introduced in hadoop 2.x version before hadoop 2.x we have a single master name node we can take only single master if that single master is failed we have to wait until that master boot or master starts so to resolve that problem in hadoop 2.x they introduced high availability concept you are getting right team yep so in hadoop 2.x we have a high availability concept next important point is so it is recommended to take separate uh, master machines on separate right so what are those name node secondary name node and job tracker or resource manager these demands okay next important point it is it is highly recommended highly recommended highly recommended to take to take both both data node data node and task tracker or node manager node manager on same mission same mission data node or task tracker or node manager on same mission data node stores the data task tracker process the data so it is recommended to take both in same mission so data location processing happen right so who will process the data task tracker or node manager that's why it is recommended to take a data node and a task tracker 
task tracker and same mission we will take based on our requirement based on based on our uh, requirement based on our requirement we will take we will take multiple multiple slave missions slave missions we take based on our requirement we take multiple slave missions means your data is huge volumes of data so we need uh, unlimited storage right yes or no your data is huge volumes of data to store that huge volumes of data to store that huge volumes of data we take slave missions multiple slave missions data nodes to process the data parallelly we take multiple task trackers that's why uh, we uh, start data node and task tracker in same mission in same mission okay okay so next uh, this uh, architecture again divided into hadoop architecture hadoop architecture again uh, divided into divided into two two types one hdfs architecture hdfs architecture and two map reduce architecture map reduce architecture in hdfs architecture is responsible for is responsible for responsible for storage storage this map reduce architecture is responsible for processing is responsible for processing processing okay so here we have a daemon in hdfs architecture uh, we have daemons like name node uh, data node and secondary name node but in uh, processing we have processing we have first one job tracker or resource manager and task tracker or node manager so processing they introduced uh, resource manager and node manager from 2.x version okay let's see so we have two architectures we have two architecture first one hdfs architecture hdfs architecture and another one map reduce architecture map reduce architecture map reduce architecture in hdfs architecture we have name node and secondary name nodes as masters and we can take multiple data nodes multiple data nodes we can take multiple data nodes
name node and secondary name node secondary name node and multiple data nodes multiple data nodes in this map reduce architecture we take uh, master is master is job tracker or resource manager and slaves are task tracker or node managers so this one is job tracker or resource manager here we take uh, task tracker or node manager task tracker or node manager task tracker or node manager okay so these are master slave architecture so this architecture is responsible for storage this architecture is responsible for storage this architecture is responsible for processing let's wait uh, someone asked a question oh he raised uh, can you please chat your uh, send me your question in chat box yes uh, each master node on different mission yes raghu it is recommended i am saying it is recommended not mandatory recommended means you can take on different missions or you can take in a same mission depends upon your uh, cluster but recommended is it is recommended to start separate mission so only one thing we start uh, demands manually uh, ragu we have a commands to start uh, name node job tracker all demands we can start start hyphen all is a command it will start all demands in a single mission if you want to start each demand separately we have a command if it is vendors if it is vendor like uh, cloudera uh, they provide cloudera manager by using that cloudera manager uh, manage cloudera manager is a web interface there you can start uh, each demand separately on each mission Yeah, Balu. If possible, can you write the message here? Yep, uh, Arun asked one question. What happens if task tracker and data node uh, fail from a single mission? That's what we we will take multiple yep, uh, we take multiple slave data node missions. That's what our architecture. So data node and task trackers are we run in same mission. So, if one data node fails, we can access data from other data nodes. If it is a single mission, we cannot do anything, right? If we start all demands in a single mission, we cannot do anything. We have to resolve problem of mission, then we can use it. If it is a cluster, cluster data is replicated. Data is replicated in multiple missions. Data is replicated in multiple missions. Okay. 
we are going to discuss that architecture uh, arun no worries so we are just discussing what is hdfs architecture what are demands involved in hdfs architecture what is mapreduce architecture what are the demands involved in mapreduce architecture uh, what is the role of hdfs architecture demands what is the role of mapreduce architecture demands then we are going to discuss if there is any problem occurred in a single mission then what will happen we are discuss we are going to discuss as part of uh, uh, complete practical part yeah hello yes balu yeah i hope akil has attended the session right akil is a new student yeah yep yep yeah please record the session i hope this is the demo class right please record the session and send to akil please okay yep sir sure. Sure, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yep. Okay. So HDFS architecture for storage and MapReduce architecture is responsible for processing. Okay. so here yep so this architecture receives storage request this architecture receives storage request storage request this architecture receives processing request processing request so you are getting right name node receives a storage request and job tracker or resource manager receives processing request okay let me save this one let me give uh, hadoop cluster architecture hadoop cluster architecture hadoop cluster architecture so what is cluster friends any idea most of them know about this cluster uh, can anyone tell me what is cluster hello team yep multiple nodes in a arc uh, multiple nodes okay group of missions yes correct any other passive active no mode okay group of missions connected through network distributed okay so you all are correct whatever you said is 100% correct yep group of missions of same application in passive active node mode okay yep so simple terminology cluster is a collection of missions or group of missions cluster is a collection of collection of missions or group of missions group of missions so simple terminology cluster is a collection of missions or group of missions so whatever you said is correct okay next important point here is in general uh, hadoop uh, cluster we have data centers 
data center data center can anyone tell me what is data center if you have an idea data center what is data center a data center is a geographical location a data center a data center is a geographical geographical location any location any location we call it as any geographical location we call it as data center or region region yes you are correct right so we we will take multiple data centers and in data center we create racks in data center we create racks in data center we create racks so this is rack 1 rack 1 rack 2 rack 3 like this we create we take multiple racks okay so what is rack a rack a rack is a collection of a rack is a collection of collection of missions a rack is a collection of missions so in a rack we take multiple missions in a rack we take multiple missions In a rack, we can take multiple missions. So we take multiple missions in a rack. How each mission communicates with other missions in a rack? How each mission communicates with other missions in a rack? For this one, we take one switch. We take one switch. So switch. So we connect all these missions to this switch. We connect all these missions to switch. So that all missions communicate with each other. Through the switch, all missions communicate with each other. Okay. So in this way communication is happen communication is happen okay so we take a uh, data center in data center we take multiple racks each mission communicate with other mission through the switch so like this we take depends upon our requirement we take multiple data data centers multiple 
data centers data center 1 data center 2 data center 3 like this we take multiple data centers so this is data center 1 data center 2 data center 3 so like this we take multiple data centers how each data center communicate with other data center how each data center communicate with other data center so we take main switch main switch so we connect all these machines to main switch so this switch is connected to through the network this switch is connected to this machine this switch this switch is connected to main switch this switch is connected to main switch so if this machine wants to communicate with this machine through the this switch uh, signals are passed through this switch this switch and this switch to this machine so in this way one data center machine from one rack to communicate with other data center with other rack machine okay in this way communication is happen okay so we may take name node here we may take secondary name node here we may take job tracker or resource manager here job tracker or resource manager here and i am taking remaining are data node and task tracker or node manager remaining missions i am taking remaining missions i am taking in this way this is fully distributed mode friends in fully distributed mode we take a cluster in this way okay so here yep we can set up for disaster recovery we take multiple data centers to chandra chandra is asking is this disaster recovery so why we create multiple data centers means to resolve disaster recovery see one data center may fail right so we can access data from other data centers yes or no that's why they take uh, different data centers in different regions region means uh, different geographical location okay so here there is one important point here is there is one special concept called proximity algorithm proximity algorithm 
in proximity algorithm in proximity algorithm we will specify we will specify data center name data center details details in proximity algorithm we will specify data center details rack details rack details missions details network bandwidth details network bandwidth bandwidth details so we provide complete all details in proximity algorithm so this is very important in hadoop cluster so in proximity algorithm in proximity algorithm in proximity algorithm we will provide information of data center and we provide information of rack detail and we provide information of each mission <coughs> sorry yep sorry mission details and network details yep uh, we provide this complete details so that whenever you store data master mission first reads this proximity algorithm and identifies where is data center where is rack where is missions and what is the bandwidth of each mission it finds this complete information from this proximity algorithm then based on this details it will uh, store blocks into corresponding missions missions so it will i said uh, name node uh, sorry master mission reads data uh, receives storage request and prepares metadata right then allocates uh, prepares metadata in that metadata it will provide information of where blocks are going to store so it prepares that information by using this proximity algorithm okay so let me save this one what is hdfs file system what is hdfs file system what is hdfs file system how data uh, stores in hdfs file system how data stores in hdfs file system so can anyone tell me what is hdfs file system what is hdfs file system any idea team any idea what is hdfs file system it's a distributed file system across multiple nodes okay and another person said uh, storage in hadoop ecosystem okay any other so coming to hdfs file system we all are uh, good at full form right hadoop distributed distributed file system yes or no hadoop distributed file system hadoop distributed file system so hdfs file system means hadoop distributed file system
hard of distributed file system it is a it is a user space file system user space file system what is the difference between what is the difference between difference between uh, local file system and hdfs file system hdfs file system what is the difference between local file system and hdfs file system for all these questions i am writing answers here so what is difference between hdfs file system and local file system just now i said hdfs file system hdfs file system is a user space file system local file system local file system means operating system file system operating system file system operating system file system starts starts as part of as part of operating system process operating system process system process when operating system starts right it will start as a operating system process so we cannot increase we cannot increase we cannot increase or we cannot decrease we cannot decrease file system size file system size we cannot decrease and we cannot increase file system size it starts as an operating system process but uh, local file system sizes local file system sizes local uh, file system sizes file system block sizes block sizes Four KB in old operating systems, old operating systems. In new operating systems, new operating systems, it is it is eight KB. Eight KB in new operating systems, it is eight KB. So it starts as a starts as a operating system process so we cannot increase or decrease uh, file system size or file system block size file system block size coming to hdfs file system hdfs file system is a user space file system hdfs file system is a user space file system it starts as a hdfs file system starts as a user process user process you are getting right whenever operating system starts operating file system starts local file system starts but hdfs file system starts as a user process whenever we start hadoop system then only it will start right who will start with this hadoop file system after starting our operating system hadoop will start right 
that's why we are saying it is a user space file system it starts as a user process okay hdfs file system hdfs file system block size block size block size until until hadoop 2.x hadoop 1.x until hadoop 1.x it is 64 mb from hadoop 2.x from hadoop 2.x block block size is 128 mb default block size this is default default block size from hadoop 2.x default block size is 128 mb but but we can configure we can configure we can configure but we can configure means means we can increase we can increase or decrease decrease block size we can increase or decrease block size so this is one of the advantage of one of the advantage of uh, hdfs file system we can increase or decrease so with multiples of 64 mb with multiples of multiples of 64 mb with multiples of 64 mb example example uh, 128 MB plus 64 MB plus 64 MB. Like this, we can increase. You can uh, increase or decrease with the multiples of 64 MB. You are getting right. So, HDFS file system is a user space file system. It starts as a user process. So the default block size of HDFS file system is 64 MB until 1.x, 128 MB from 2.x, but it is configurable with multiples of 64 MB. So I will tell how to configure this HDFS file system. If you not configure, the, it will uh, take it as 128 MB as a default in from Hadoop 2.x okay so next to class next to class i will explain how we place how or what will happen what will happen when you place when you place when you place file into file into hdfs file system when you place file into hdfs file system what will happen when you place file into hdfs file system so tomorrow class we discuss this one in depth so that you will understand how hdfs file is going to split into multiple blocks how uh, it plays each block into different missions mm. so it depends right so it is never by default everyone uses default block default block if you want to increase readability fast reading then we increase block size so at a time earlier at a time it reads 64 mb block from hadoop 2.x it is reading 128 mb block at a time so readability speaking time or reading time become faster so if you want to increase reading time then you can increase 128 MB by 
64 MB. So it will increase readability, but problem is data is not distributed, right? So for example, if you, distrib if you increase block size is 300 MB, so you place the file 300 MB file. So only one block. So one mission process this 300 MB block. So if you increase more size, but distribution is not happen. So in that case, it is recommended to take based on your requirement, based on your data size, we increase or decrease file system block size. Okay. So that's what clearly I'm saying. Uh, it is default block size. We can find this block, default block information in one of the configuration file properties. So they give us some configuration files. Uh, in that configuration files, uh, you can find uh, you can google that configuration file properties it lists all the information of properties okay so installation part i will explain clearly what are different properties we configure as part of installation so tomorrow also we discuss hdfs file system and uh, these demands demands a discussion once you understand that hdfs file system and demands details then we start installation of hadoop okay so that's it for today we will meet tomorrow and we'll continue hdfs file system okay Yep. Yep. Uh, in previous class. In previous class, we discussed uh, Hadoop architecture. Hadoop architecture. In Hadoop architecture, we discussed what are different components of Hadoop, what are different components, components or demands of Hadoop, demands of uh, Hadoop. Then we discussed uh, HDFS architecture and we discussed MapReduce architecture. MapReduce architecture, right? So, today, class, what we are going to do is what is HDFS file system? What is HDFS? Uh, Yesterday we discussed this one also. What is HDFS file system? Yes or no? What is HDFS file system? Yesterday we discussed all these concepts. So today we discuss how to what will happen. Sorry, what will happen? when client wants to place file when client wants to place wants to place or store 
फाइल इंटू एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम फाइल इंटू एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम सो वाट विल वाट विल हैपन वेन क्लैंट वाट टू प्ले फाइल इंटू एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम सो क्लैंट क्लैंट वन वाट स्टोर फाइल वन वित् सैज वित् सैज टू थ्री हड्रेड एम बी सो क्लैंट वाट टू प्ले फाइल वित् सैज थ्री हड्रेड एम बी ओके सो इन एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम इन एच डी एफ एस फाइल सिस्टम फाइल सिस्टम फाइल इज स्टेड इंटू फाइल इज स्प्लिट इंटू स्प्लिट इंटू वाट मलिपल चंक्स रईट मलिपल चंक्स फाइल स्प्लिट इंटू मलिपल चंक्स काल ब्लाक्स का ब्लाक्स so the default block size the default block size can anyone tell me what is default block size hello can anyone tell me what is default block size Superb. Yes, you are correct. So, until until Hadoop one point x, Hadoop one point x block size is sixty four MB. From Hadoop two point x, from Hadoop two point x block size is one twenty eight MB. One twenty eight MB. okay so let me explain when you when client want to place file what will happen okay so diagrammatically i am explaining so this is our uh, file sorry hadoop cluster so we have a master machine and multiple slave machines multiple slave machines so we have five slave machines we have five slave machines as a admin as a hadoop administrator we have to get complete in depth knowledge of uh, this uh, internal things because we are going to deal with this uh, background file system if you want to modify we do modifications everything configuration part is taken care by hadoop administrator not hadoop developer hadoop devel developer knows about these things but we cannot give access to modify anything on hadoop cluster we are means hadoop administrator are responsible for everything so we have to know these things very in depth team are you getting my voice hello yep maybe okay this is our five node cluster five slave machines and one master machine so this is data node sorry name node and these are data nodes data node 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 so we have five data nodes okay client want to place file so this is client 1 mission client 1 mission client want to place file with the size what 300 mb file name is file 1 and size is 300 mb 300 mb file size is 300 mb first client 
sends the request to name node. First to client sends the request to name node. First to client sends request to name node. Then name node prepares metadata. Name node prepares metadata. Name node prepares metadata. Name node prepares metadata. So before preparing this metadata, before preparing this metadata, it will read hdfs site.xml file. Name node reads hdfs site.xml file for block size. For block size, comma, for replication factor, for replication factor. So for replication factor, it will read these two files. So for size, default is default is 128 MB. Default is 128 MB. Okay. Default replication factor is three. And next it reads slaves mission, slaves file, slaves file for data nodes for data nodes and it reads proximity algorithm proximity algorithm it reads proximity algorithm for proximity algorithm for data centers data centers comma racks comma bandwidth of bandwidth bandwidth information in yesterday architecture i explained what is data center what is rack uh, what is uh, bandwidth means internet speed based on this information it will prepare this metadata one minute Okay, for this information, it will read these files, then prepares metadata. So, metadata means metadata means metadata means mapping of mapping of file to block block to data nodes list. One minute. Sorry. data notes list so metadata contain mapping of file to block block to data notes list so here yes, it prepares metadata in this way file one sorry before that i will explain so block is divided in this manner 300 mb by 128 mb we will get three blocks Three blocks. We get what? Three blocks. Block one with 128 MB. 128 MB. Block two with 128 MB. Block three with 128 MB. So these are three different blocks. Okay, so in this way we get then here it prepares metadata saying file one, block one, data node one, comma three, comma five. File one, block two, data node two, comma three, comma five. File one, block three, three, comma four, comma in this way it prepares metadata first block is placed one three and five so block one is placed here block one is placed here and block one is placed here
one let's uh, one minute someone ask good question yep uh akil asking akil asking why it is one comma three comma five and two comma three comma five yep for that uh, question akil so it reads proximity algorithm in this proximity algorithm it contains bandwidth of each mission and racks information and data center information so here we created right this is our assumption this is our assumption internally it reads slaves file and reads uh, proximity algorithm based on clients with the nearest location of data centers it will prepare metadata this is our assumption akil internally based on proximity algorithm based on proximity algorithm uh, it will prepare what metadata okay one minute someone challenge okay yeah you got it again so this is our assumption okay so block 2 is placed in 2 3 and 5 so block 2 block 2 and block two and block three is placed block three block three is placed in three comma four comma five block three block three Block three. So in this way, data is placed in Hadoop cluster. So this is Hadoop cluster. So client to places data into in this manner first client interact with the name node name node prepares metadata based on these parameters and returns this information back to client then once a client get this metadata information then client writes the data into hdfs file system so if you understand here here name node is not responsible to write the data client is responsible to write the data into hadoop cluster just name node prepares metadata and returns this information back to client then once a client gets uh, this metadata information then client writes the data into hdfs file system okay so here we have to know main important points block means it's a it is a small it is a chunk of data it is a chunk of data it is a chunk of data so here replication what is replication team just now we discussed what is replication Can anyone tell me what is replication? Multiple copies. Okay. Keeping same data in other servers. Okay. Same copy of other data. Superb. Okay. 
any other yes uh, can you please start so that it become interactive session whatever you know you can please uh, uh, chat in real time what is block size used in industry so i said default block size we go for default block size framework it seems 128 mb is too high no so because of why if it is 128 mb is uh, high then apache cannot define size it is big data file system so to read data very faster then they defined this 128 mb size duplicate copy of data yes you are correct so whatever your answer always all of you correct so it's a duplicate copy of duplicate copy of same block duplicate copy of same block so there is one more concept replication factor replication factor what is replication factor replication factor means how many duplicate copies how many duplicate duplicate copies of duplicate copies of same data duplicate copies of same data is called replication factor so the default replication factor is the default replication factor is tell me replication factor is 3 the default replication factor is 3 yes you all are correct so it is configurable it is configurable configurable we can we can increase we can increase or decrease decrease this replication factor size based on our requirement we can increase or decrease replication factor okay so we have different uh, demands in hadoop cluster so we saw in hadoop architecture we have different demands so each demand has its own role its own role so we have hdfs demand we have map reduce demands hdfs demands are responsible for storage part map reduce demands are responsible for processing part so hdfs demands what are hdfs demand can anyone tell me can anyone tell me what are hdfs demand can you please uh, type in chat box name node secondary name node data node okay data node name node secondary name node secondary name node superb yes so hdfs demands are name node name node uh, data node data node and secondary name node secondary name node secondary name node next secondary name node okay next one map reduce demands map reduce demands what are map reduce demands can anyone tell me transaction node okay job tracker resource manager task tracker name node superb yes yes wow so map reduce demand sir job tracker job tracker or 
रिसोर्स मैनेजर रिसोर्स रिसोर्स मैनेजर एंड टास्क ट्रैकर और नोड मैनेजर नोड मैनेजर टास्क ट्रैकर और नोड मैनेजर वट इज द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एच डी एफ एस डी मन दीज आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दीज आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर स्टोरेज स्टोरेज दीज आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर these are responsible for these are responsible for responsible for processing these are responsible for processing hdfs demands are responsible for storage map reduce demands are responsible for processing okay so here see uh next we are going to see hadoop installation hadoop installation hadoop installation so here this hadoop installation prerequisites Hadoop installation prerequisites. So we need one. We need uh, virtual machine, virtual, virtual, virtualization, virtualization uh, software because. we are using windows operating system so instead of uh, uh, installing dual boot uh, in windows install any virtualization software so we have virtualization softwares like uh, vmware vmware workstation workstation comma virtual box virtual box and we have other also other uh in our course i am using vmware workstation vmware workstation vmware workstation next we require any linux linux operating system any linux operating operating system any linux operating system we have two flavors debian debian flavor debian flavor and red hat flavor red hat uh, flavor so it won't give any smell like flower flavor means a smell right so debian flavors like debian debian ubuntu ubuntu etc red hat flavors like red hat red hat centos centos and fedora etc fedora etc there are multiple operating system so here i am going to use uh, in our example i am going to use centos Sent over here. Okay. Third one. Third one. Java. Java. One. Java eight. Java eight are later versions. Later. So we need Java eight are later versions. Next one. We need network. Uh, we need SSN. Sorry, SSH. So here we create passwords. 
passwordless ssh passwordless ssh then we use some networking commands uh, networking networking commands so linux networking commands we are going to use linux in networking commands so we are going to learn all this so if you try to install vmware workstation in your system i will show you how to install linux flavor linux flavor and uh, i am going to show you how to install cent os how to install java how to set up passwordless why we are setting passwordless ssh and what are different networking commands we are going to use as part of our apache hadoop administration so uh, it is complete practical part okay uh, next class we are going to uh, start uh, this practical part okay let's start in previous class in previous class we discussed about uh, prerequisites for installation and before that we discussed hdfs concepts right we discussed hdfs concept and we discussed prerequisites for prerequisites for apache hadoop installation apache hadoop installation right today class today class uh, we are going to discuss types of hadoop installations types of apache hadoop installation apache hadoop installation okay so we can install hadoop in three ways we can install hadoop in three ways they are first one local or standalone mode standalone mode local or standalone mode second one sudo distribution mode sudo distribution mode and third one fully distribution mode fully distribution mode we can install hadoop in three ways one is local or standalone mode and second one sudo distribution mode and third one fully distribution mode okay so let me explain uh, all these three types so i am explaining these three uh, diagrammatically okay so local mode before going to explain local mode uh, first i'll explain how hadoop installation so first we need operating system we need operating system we need operating system on top of operating system we need to install jvm we need to install jvm what is jvm can anyone tell me what is jvm hello yes it is a java virtual machine it is a java 
virtual mission to run java programs right to run java programs to run any java program we need java virtual mission so hadoop is implemented by using java that's why to run hadoop hadoop software we need jvm so finally on top of jvm we install hadoop we install hadoop so you can install hadoop of uh, apache vendor hadoop of cloudera vendor or any vendor vendor may be apache vendor may be cloudera vendor may be any vendor we need jvm on top of jvm we install hadoop so this is hadoop so let's discuss local mode local mode local or standalone standalone mode local or standalone mode in local mode or standalone mode local mode or standalone mode all demands runs in on single jvm all demands runs on single jvm so same as this one we have operating system and we have jvm on top of jvm remaining five demands right we have a name node we have name node and secondary data node secondary name node job tracker or task tracker and next one resource manager or node manager right so all demands name node secondary name node data node and job tracker or task tracker and task tracker next one either job tracker or or resource manager right so here task tracker or task tracker or node manager right so these all demands runs on a single jvm these all demands runs on a single jvm in local mode okay so this is single jvm if you use sudo distribution mode if you use sudo distribution mode in sudo distribution mode all demands runs on separate jvm all demands runs on separate jvm in sudo distribution mode all demands runs on separate jvm so here yeah. let's remove this one so this one runs on separate jvm 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 okay yep let me draw this diagram and uh, i'll clear your doubt
ओके सही है इन लोकल मोड इन लोकल मोड लेट मी एक्सप्लेन ये इन लोकल मोड ऑल डिमांड्स इन लोकल मोड इन लोकल मोड और स्टैंड अलोन मोड all demands all demands runs on runs on single jvm runs on single jvm this is for development development and debugging purpose debugging purpose this is not for this is not for testing and production this mode is not useful for testing and production and coming to pseudo distribution mode in pseudo distribution mode pseudo distribution mode pseudo distribution mode is for both uh, it runs on it runs on first uh, i didn't cover this one we set up we set up local mode or stand alone mode on single machine single machine single mission all demands all demands all demands runs runs in a single mission in a single mission all demands runs in a single mission okay so pseudo distribution mode pseudo distribution mode same as this one pseudo distribution mode also we set up in uh, single mode single mission pseudo distribution mode we install on single mission single mission and all demands runs on runs on runs in a single mission in pseudo distribution mode or local mode all demands all demands runs on separate jvm runs on separate jvm all demands runs on separate jvm it is for it is for both development and debugging local mode is for both development and debugging but this one is for it is for both development and testing purpose testing purpose but not for but not for production purpose production purpose so this pseudo distribution is not suitable for production purpose each demand is a separate program that's why we can run on separate jvm okay so in fully distribution mode in fully distribution mode all demands runs in separate jvm all demands demands all demands runs on separate jvm separate jvm and on separate separate machine fully distribution mode in fully distribution mode all demands runs on separate jvm and on separate machine so 
So fully distribution mode we create in this way. Take a fully distribution mode. Fully distribution mode. So it is highly recommended to take master missions on separate JVM. Master missions on separate JVM. And we can take multiple slave missions. We can take multiple slave missions. So this is job tracker or resource manager. This one is name node, name node. This one is secondary name node. Here we can take data node and task tracker or data node and task tracker or node manager. Task tracker or node manager. Okay, so we can take task tracker or node manager. Task tracker or node manager. Task tracker or node manager. So in fully distribution mode, in fully distribution mode. All demands runs on separate JVM on separate mission. It is highly, highly recommended, recommended to take to take all master master demands, all master demands on separate mission. Separate mission. separate mission okay next it is highly recommended it is highly highly recommended recommended both uh, data node and task tracker or node manager on same mission same mission okay because data and process missions process demands must be on same mission okay depends upon our requirement depends on our uh, requirement requirement or data size depends upon our requirement or data size we take we take multiple multiple slave missions multiple slave missions okay in fully distribution mode depends upon our requirement we take multiple slave missions you are getting right team you are understanding right uh, these three types of installation Okay, now we are going to see installation part. Installation part, one important note, one important note. By default, by default, by default, Hadoop 
installation is local mode. Hadoop installation is local mode. Local mode. By default, Hadoop installation is local mode. So when you download and install, then by default it is called local mode. Local mode or standalone mode. Okay. So we convert to local mode to pseudo distribution mode or fully distribution mode. We convert local mode to pseudo distribution mode or fully distribution mode. If you download and extract and set up class path, by default it is local mode. Then we convert that local mode to pseudo distribution mode or fully distribution mode. Okay. So first let's start with the pseudo distribution mode installation. In pseudo distribution mode, I will tell you when we call uh, local mode. Okay, pseudo distribution mode. In pseudo distribution mode, in pseudo distribution mode, all demands, all demands runs on same mission, same mission, but different demands, right? But on, but on different. JVM button different JVM. Yes or no? In pseudo distribution mode, all demands runs on same mission but on different JVM. How it runs on separate JVM? We will see. One minute. Okay, so pseudo distribution mode. All demands runs on same mission, but on different JVM. Okay, so here we have any installation. It may be local mode, it may be uh, pseudo distribution mode, it may be fully distribution mode. We have three steps. Any Hadoop installation. Any Hadoop installation means local or pseudo pseudo or fully distributed mode. Fully distributed mode. Any Hadoop installation, it may be local or pseudo or fully distributed mode, has three steps. Has three steps. First one, step one, pre installation, pre installation steps, pre installation steps, and step two, step two, installation, installation step. And step three, post installation step, post installation, post installation. So we have pre installation and uh, installation and post installation. We have three steps. Okay. Any Hadoop installation has three steps. One is 
pre installation and another one is installation next one is post installation okay let's see first uh, pre installation so pre installation let me take first step one in pre installation what we do in pre installation what we do okay in post in installation step what we will do and post installation what we will do so first installation pre installation we need uh, first operating system we need operating system so most of the times linux most of the times linux next one java must java installation java installation so we need to install java second one dedicated user dedicated user user instead of dedicated let's say user user is required so in pre installation step we need operating system java must be installed on operating system user and the next one password less passwordless ssh why passwordless ssh is required i will explain okay next uh, these are very important before installing hadoop in installation step in installation step we download we download hadoop tar file Hadoop tar file. Next, extract tar file. Extract tar file. Optionally, optionally, rename. Optionally, rename. Next, set Hadoop underscore home. Adobe underscore home and path variable. Set Adobe underscore home path variable. Next, verify Adobe. Verify Adobe. Verify Adobe. So, these steps we do in installation part. In step three, post installation after installation to convert to convert from local mode local or standalone mode to sudo mode sudo mode or fully distribution mode distribution mode fully distribution mode so before that i cover one important point here in local mode or pseudo distribution mode it uses it uses local file system it uses local file system in pseudo mode or uh, sorry local mode or standalone mode it uses local file system in hdfs mo uh, pseudo distribution mode it uses it uses hdfs file system it uses hdfs file system so because we need distributed right here for debugging purpose distributed is not suitable that's why it uses local file system and fully distribution mode also uses 
fully distribution mode also uses hdfs file system so what we do so to convert from local to sudo mode or fully distribution mode first we do what we will specify we will specify specify hdfs file system file system type this is one okay and one more we do we do some modifications some modifications or some configurations some configurations configurations in core hyphen core hyphen site core hyphen site dot xml file next one core hyphen site dot xml file next one hdfs hyphen site dot xml file hdfs hyphen site dot xml file next one map red hyphen site dot xml file and next one yarn hyphen site dot xml file yarn hyphen site dot xml file next uh, we do some modifications in slaves file and next masters file masters file files etc so these are some important these are some important configuration files in post installation we do all these steps then we start we start and stop stop demands we start and stop demands we verify demands we verify demands okay we will then we do our activity okay we do all these steps after post after installation that's why we are calling post installation steps one minute Yeah, let's go for uh, pre-installation steps. Pre-installation steps. Okay. So first, to install operating system, 
we are discussing requirements as part of operating system installation i am going to install centos 7 why i am installing centos 7 means it is uh, red hat flavor red hat flavor red hat flavor and most of production servers are most of production servers are sent to us so if you understand if you get understand in if you get hands on sent to us you can easily work on any red hat flavor operating system okay Ubuntu is a Debian flavor. I already said Ubuntu is a Debian flavor. So most of the production or most of the people doesn't use Ubuntu for production purpose. So only most of production servers are Red Hat or Red Hat flavors. Few systems, few servers are Debian flavors. So it's my recommendation is uh, install CentOS get practice and you can work on any red hat flavor why we are not installing red hat in our system means it's a licensed version sent OS is completely free okay so next to install this operating system on our mission we need virtualization software virtual virtualization virtualization software we need virtualization software here we can use vmware workstation we can use vmware workstation or virtual box virtual box etc there are multiple softwares but as part of our course i am going to use vmware workstation vmware workstation okay next so these are requirements for vmware so next java installation we are going to use java 8 java 8 or later version is required so recommended version is recommended is java 8 java 8 so at the time of operating system at the uh, time of time of operating system system i will create user i will create user or after installation also we can create user after installation after installation also we can uh, we can create user we can create user but at the time of operating system i will create user then i will explain what is the use of passwordless how to create passwordless so first this one so uh yeah download download vmware workstation vmware workstation and install download vmware workstation and install so here go to google search uh, vmware workstation download vmware workstation download this is authorized website link and this is file hippo link you can download from authorized website or from file hippo anyone You can download from authorized website or from file hippo file hippo is also a trusted website 
file repo also a trusted website okay once you download and it will download exe file double click on that exe file and follow steps most of the times you choose default options don't change any options uh, install virtual vmware workstation here search vmware you will get vmware workstation pro or desktop also you get icon saying vmware workstation okay once you install successfully next step next step b install download and install download and install send to os send to os latest version latest version so currently current uh, current version is 7 current version is 7 sent to os 7 okay so go to google and search sent to os sent to os download sent to os download here you will see first link go to first link so here you will see download option so we are seeing two options one is dvd uh, iso dvd iso and another one is minimal iso minimal iso dvd iso contain dvd iso contain a lot of uh, lot of third party third party software third party software but but minimal iso minimal iso contains contains only operating system operating system and supported files supported files other other softwares other required softwares required softwares we have to install manually we have to install manually manually recommended is recommended is minimal iso minimal iso so most of the times we use minimal iso not dvd iso whatever the software is required we install those softwares manually yep whatever you know you can do it with operating systems only. okay so most of the times we go for minimal iso first time i am downloading dvd iso next later uh, i will download minimal iso and i will install this one but dvd iso dvd iso uh, it require minimum minimum of 2 gb ram minimum of 2 gb ram okay dvd iso require minimum 2 gb ram because it install graphical user interfaces if it is a minimal iso everything is command prompt it will work from 256 g 256 mb ram so it's recommended minimum 512 ram not 256 minimum recommended 512 ram for minimal iso i am not saying 
Hadoop. I am saying for minimal ISO. Okay. But for Hadoop requirement minimum 2 GB RAM. Apache Hadoop. Minimum it's recommended 2 GB RAM. Okay. So download and install sent to buyers. So let's uh, see. Uh, go to this DVD ISO. Click on this DVD ISO. And here you will see different links. Click on any one of the links. It is asking you to download. So you can download. It is 4.27 GB. It is 4.27 GB. Okay. I have already installed in my system. I have already installed in my system. Then go to VMware workstation icon. Click on this VMware workstation icon. It will open VMware. In your system, you may not have all these installations. You may not have all these installations in your system. It is press installation, right? But in my machine, already some in, uh, operating systems are installed. Let me install our sudo distribution mode, Apache sudo distribution mode setup. For that one, we are installing operating system. So right click on here, click on new virtual machine. Right click on here, click on new virtual machine. So select almost all, select all default options. So default, leave it as typical. Click on next. And if it is not selected, I will install operating system later. Select this one. If it is selected, OK. Click on next. Here it is showing different operating systems supported by VMware uh, virtualization software. So here choose Linux. In this Linux, it is supporting many Linux operating systems. Many Linux operating systems. Here, we are installing CentOS, right? Yes or no? So CentOS 7, 64 better. OK, then click on Next. Here I'm giving name is Apache. Apache sudo, sudo distribution. I'm giving name is Apache sudo distribution. And it is installing in C drive. Instead of installing in C drive, you can create a separate folder in a different drive. Because if you install everything in C drive, while restarting, Windows will take longer time. So it is recommended to install in separate drive. So I'm browsing. I'm installing in F drive. I have softwares folder here. Under softwares, I have uh, created VM. In this VM, I created uh, VMware. Here I am going to create one more folder saying Apache sudo sudo distribution. I am creating Apache sudo distribution. Just select that name. Okay, click on OK. Then click on Next. Minimum it requires 30 GB RAM. Sorry, hard disk space. So select uh, type 30 GB. See, I am installing in F drive, right? In F drive, if 30 GB hard disk is not available, then what will happen? Can anyone guess? If F drive doesn't have 30 GB, what will happen? Can anyone guess? Is operating system will install or is operating system installation will give error? Can anyone guess and tell me? So it will install. Operating system will get error. Gives error message. It will install, friends. It will install. Even you, your F drive doesn't have 30 GB uh, hard disk space, it will install. Because installation will take just uh, 
1 GB or less than 1 GB. Installation will take less than 1 GB or 1 GB space. After installation, it will span a maximum 30 GB. So that's what we are giving here. Okay. Okay, click on next. And here, click on customize hardware. If you forgot to click on customize hardware, we can change properties later. Click on finish. So this is Apache distribution Hadoop. What I'm doing, I'm creating separate uh, directory here. So I'm creating new folder saying Apache Hadoop admin. Apache Hadoop admin. I'm moving this uh, folder to Apache admin folder because we are creating complete Apache Hadoop admin related. Okay. So here, yeah, uh, click on this Apache sudo distribution link. Then here, you see edit virtual mission settings. So default, it is allocated 1 GB RAM, but I want to allocate 2 GB RAM. Because we are installing DVD ISO, right? So DVD ISO complete contain graphical user interface. So graphical user interface occupies more memory space. That's why it is recommended to allocate 2 GB RAM. So processor minimum one and hard disk we allocated 30 GB. Okay. And CD DVD, select this CD DVD, select use ISO and browse iso file which you have downloaded earlier click on browse in my system i have uh, sent OS in in this uh, f drive software so i'm selecting dvd iso click on dvd iso click on open okay go to network adapter select a bridge why we are selecting bridge i will explain later so it is recommended to select bridge okay so click on okay then click on power on virtual mission power on virtual mission here we choose some options we choose some options so select uh, install centos 7 install centos 7 this Control Alt to come out from this uh, sent to uh, VMware. And this one is to make full screen. Here we select some options. Let's see. And I'm expecting everyone do this uh, in your system. Okay, select a default English language. Click on continue. Click on date and time. Select a country. So I'm selecting India. Click on done. And here, uh, click on software selection. Here, click on server with GUI. Okay. Click on done. Okay. Click on this installation source. Click on installation source. Okay, no need. 
and click on installation destination it is selected click one time again click one more time then click on done and here click on network and host name click on on button it will generate ip address dynamically and here i am giving mission name computer name i am giving apache dot uh, sudo sudo dot c family computers c family computers computer name can be any name click on apply okay click on done then click on begin installation then give password for root password for root click on done create user i said we can create user at the time of installation right here click on user i am giving hadoop username is hadoop making this user as administrator and giving password okay click on done click on done that's it so it is installing operating system it is installing operating system it will take some time to install operating system okay so once installation is completed next we will install other pre installation step that is java installation in tomorrow class i will show you how to install java in our sent via system okay so that's it for today if you have any doubts uh, please let me know so that uh, i will explain yep here one of our friend uh, question is instead of using laptop and vm configuration can we use amazon emr for uh, hadoop learning yes we can but it it is uh, they will charge money we can create uh, ec2 instance in ec2 instance with uh, sent os you can try hadoop installation in that mission instead of that one try to practice in virtual mission so that you will get uh, clear understanding later you can go for cloud okay yep we can install in cloud yep uh, i can okay so that's it for today class uh, we'll disc we will continue tomorrow and we will discuss okay thank you we'll meet uh, tomorrow start in previous class uh, we dis started discussing types of installation apache hadoop installation so in types of installation we have local or standalone mode installation sudo distribution mode installation and fully distribution mode installation and we discussed what is local or standalone mode installation and we discussed what is sudo distribution mode installation and we discussed what is fully distribution mode discussion so this is the diagram right we discussed so generally uh, hadoop installed on top of jvm jvm installed on top of operating system yes or no so in local mode all demands runs on single jvm in sudo distribution mode all daemon, each demand runs on separate jvm in fully distribution mode each demand runs on separate mission 
so all master demands runs on separate machine slave demands like data node and node manager or task tracker runs on runs on same mission but runs on multiple missions so we discussed this architecture okay next we started discussing uh, sudo distribution mode installation in that we discussed different steps so uh, step one pre-installation steps and step two installation steps and step three post installation steps as part of pre-installation i said operating system we installed we install java we install we create a separate user and we install passwordless SSH. So, in previous class, in previous class, we discussed what? Step one, pre-installation steps. As part of pre-installation step, we started installing operating system, yes or no? So, we downloaded VMware Workstation and we installed VMware Workstation as part of operating system installation. Then we downloaded CentOS, right? We downloaded CentOS and we installed CentOS, okay? So this part is completed. Let's see. So after complete installation, accept license agreement, this one, accept license agreement, click on done, okay? Click finish configuration. So, uh, step one pre installation steps operating system and VMware is completed. So, pre installation step uh, is completed. Step one and step two, step one, inside step one. Next, we see java installation java installation so here we see java 8 installation java 8 installation so once it is uh, accepted license agreement it will show list of users here if user is not presented click on not listed <coughs> sorry so go to user so your uh, type user is root and username is password sorry enter your password so we are logging into root user we are logging into centos using root user Once operating system installation is completed, so these three steps are completed in yesterday class. Today we are going to see first operating system installation, sorry, Java installation. Next, we see passwordless, passwordless SSH creation. First time only it will show that uh, list of options. Once you selected uh, all those options, next to startup onwards, it won't to show that options. Okay. So operating system successfully installed in our virtual mission, virtualization software. Okay. So after completing this one, we can install Java. So we can install Java by using duplicate command. Uh, by using duplicate command, 
first download java right so installation part we see download java download java so here we have dot tar file dot tar tar file or tzz file and we have dot rpm file dot rpm file so we have two files dot gz file uh, and next one dot rpm file if you use tz file if you use tz file we have to we have to do many configurations many configurations many configurations using alternatives keyword alternatives uh, keyword okay if you use uh, rpm file rpm file we use m command m command to install m command to install okay so to download to download to download to download either tzz file dot tzz file or or dot rpm file dot rpm file to download either tzz file or dot rpm file we can use we can use wget command wget command or download download in windows download in windows then move to move to linux using win scp win scp so you can download software using wget command or download using win scp in windows sorry download in windows then move that files using win scp okay first step we are seeing so here we are downloading downloading in windows downloading in windows and move using win scp we are going to see move using win scp okay so let's see go to oracle website go to oracle website go to oracle website uh, download java java 8 download java 8 download so as part of this one we are seeing java 8 download right so go to google search java 8 download click on first link oracle website link here you will see latest version of oracle so first accept license agreement okay here it is showing linux supported as well as solar is supported and windows supported and mac operating system supported okay so here i want to download windows supported that to 64 bit supported so we have linux x64 2 in that if you observe one is rpm file one is tar.gz file we want rpm file let's click on this rpm file okay it is downloaded it is downloading into some location next we need win scp software win scp software to move this file into linux so win scp is a open source win scp not op i don't know whether it is open source or not it is free it is free so no need to pay any license 
so it uses it uses scp protocol scp protocol to move files to move files scp stands for secure copy secure copy protocol okay so download win scp it is free download win scp win scp download so go to win scp official website this is very important for us so click on download win scp it's 9.1 mb so once you downloaded uh, install win scp you will see icon like this so this is win scp icon okay so once we have win scp icon click on win scp icon i don't want the latest version i want to continue with the same version so here it will ask username and password so click on new suit here it will ask computer name or domain name or host name or ip address so enter ip address enter username and enter password then click on login it will connect to linux mission so first we need ip address of our mission okay so go to here, uh, our uh, linux mission then see currently on desktop there is no jdk right once we move using win scp we will see jdk uh, rpm file so click on open terminal type uh, if config if config if config means interface config it will display interface configuration okay so here this is our computer ip address this ip address is generated automatically when we are installing operating system yes or no later uh, in fully distribution mode i will show how to create static ip address fixed ip address because this ip address automatically change uh, if you install multiple missions in your vmware we cannot expect the same ip address is available for this mission we cannot expect this is dynamically changed ip address i will show later in fully distribution mode how to set up fixed ip address or static ip address for our mission okay so use this ip address to connect our mission so here enter ip address enter username of that linux mission enter password of linux mission root user mission if you want to save this one click on save click on save give name apache uh, hadoop apache hadoop sudo distribution mode right sudo i'm putting name is sudo click ok then click on login yes add that's it if you observe right side is linux mission left side is windows mission so in linux mission i want to under desktop i want to place this file so downloaded file is available under user downloads so see downloads under downloads you will see uh, jdk right so jdk is downloaded 11th this is the latest one so copy uh, just to drag this file and place this file into linux version So first part download is completed and we moved successfully file into linux machine if you observe here if you minimize you will see jdk rpm file yes or no 
team are you hearing me we successfully downloaded file and we moved successfully into linux machine right no one is responding are you hearing me so up to first part is okay right download is completed right so next part we see b install java so here we are installing java by using m command so go to terminal cd desktop cd desktop then here m install hyphen y and jdk version jdk rpm file rpm file that's it it will install it will install it will install java in slash usr slash java with jdk version jdk jdk version okay under this you will see different folders so this is installation path okay let's go and install this one so here every time instead of going this mission instead of going here and doing operations so i will take linux client linux client linux client linux client uh, to connect to connect linux servers to connect linux to servers so we have we have plenty of plenty of uh, uh, linux clients linux clients one putty and two m m remote ng m remote ng there are many many client to softwares available in the market so install putty download putty so download putty so everyone try to download putty it's my recommendation uh, try to get hands on using putty try to get hands on using putty okay So first download putty download putty so you can download dot exe file dot exe file then if you click on dot exe file it will open window so go to google so google is very important so this website is very important google.com if you remember this google.com you can it gives 50 percent of solution so only next thing we have to know how to search in search bar so most of software engineers first point everyone has to know this address and everyone has to know searching keyword then we get to 50 percent solution next onwards copy paste commands so next to control c control v 70 percent solution okay so here click on download putty here you will see download putty click on this one click here it will show list of installation files don't go for installation files go here a putty.exe file you will see 64 bit putty exe file 
so click on this putty exe file okay make uh, place this one in anywhere you require then set it as a desktop icon desktop icon otherwise go to that location and click on exe file so you will get exe file if you click on exe file it will show here it is asking host name so go to find the host name or ip address of our mission so this is ip address right copy this one and paste ip address here okay uh, here i am giving name apache hadoop sudo right sudo so save save this one if you want to save username here there is one option data here enter username root and if you want to change font size click on appearance change font size so here i'm changing font size is 12 okay and i want to give instead of a black screen i want to give white screen so use system colors then finally go to session save all configuration details click on open yes then enter password of root user okay once you enter go to cd desktop ls command here it is seeing rpm file right then i said the next statement install right m install m install iphone y jdk so what is the problem is here it is taking rpm right lengthy name so let's take uh, rename that one mv jdk and uh, again jdk so change this lengthy name okay clear ls now what we are going to do is m install uh, iphone y jdk rpm that's it press enter started installing this jdk so if you not enter iphone y it will ask multiple times confirmation if you not enter iphone y it will ask multiple times confirmation So installation is successful. It will install under cd slash root slash user slash user Java under Java JDK, right? So this is the path PWD. So this is the path ls. Here we see, we see bin and other folders to make all bin commands available anywhere in our computer then we set what java underscore home and path variable so next to c c set java underscore home set java underscore home and path variable path variable to make to make all java commands java commands available available anywhere anywhere in our computer in our system okay so for that one we are setting java underscore home 
and path variable so here in windows in windows we set in we set in environment variables environment variables yes or no in windows we set these java underscore home path variable in environment variables is it correct team hello do we set uh, java underscore where uh, java underscore home and path variable in environment variable or some other location I'm asking in Windows friend. Windows environment variable, right? Yes. But in Linux, in Linux, in Linux, in Linux, there are multiple configuration. There are multiple, multiple startup files. Startup files files in that in that in that dot bash rc dot bash rc is by default presented for by default presented for presented for user every user every user every user home directory home directory every user home directory so if you observe here for every user home directory under cd slash home here if you observe ls for every user it will create one home directory hadoop is a user right hadoop is a user yes or no we have one installation time we created one user called hadoop did you remember installation time we created one user hadoop so this is the user if you go cd hadoop ls 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 hyphen l ls hyphen a so hyphen a displays hidden files dot any file name dot any file name is a hidden file name so dot bash rc is one file dot bash profile is another file dot bash underscore logout is another file so we have three default files in this one default file called dot bash rc in this bash rc file we add this java underscore home and path variable so we have java is presented under this location right yes or no so go to that location cd class usr uh, java jdk pwd copy this path copy this path just to place cursor here that's it it will copy nano nano and dot bash rc dot bash rc so here we use one more tilde slash dot bash rc so if you use tilde slash dot bash rc currently we are in which user friends hello currently we are in which user no one is responding superb so currently we are in root user right so some are said correct some are said wrong so if you see as prompt we see root user right this one i said uh, in installation time so if you see uh, has from 
we can say has prompt means root user root user okay and dollar prompt means normal user means normal user prompt normal user prompt so by seeing this prompt we can say we are in root user okay so if we set this path it will set to root user it will java path is available only for root user but uh, i said we can create we can make one dedicated user for hadoop right so set path in set path in user hadoop home directory so for that one switch user so switch user to switch user we use nano nano sorry not nano su is a command su username hadoop it will switch from root user to normal user i want to know whether i logged in i logged in or i switched to hadoop user then say who am i if you say who am i you will get student right same same here if you get who am i it will give username hadoop so next one nano nano tilde slash dot bash rc so go here type comment java underscore home java underscore home there is a command export and type java underscore home equal to pass this path oh. so we need uh, java path right let's open another terminal cd slash usr slash uh, java slash jdk okay pwd so this is the path copy this path copy this path and paste uh, paste here okay next one export path equal to dollar path this command refers old path colon it will append java path dollar dollar java underscore home java underscore home slash bin bin directory contain all commands so up to bin path we are setting path variable that's it java home is set java home is set <coughs> okay once it is set control x and y to save and quit from nano prompt so once it is set restart 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 bash rc file dot bash rc file so to restart bash rc file we use command saying source command source command this command refreshes path and makes that path available to this terminal okay now check java version verify java version java version <coughs> verify java version so if you use verify java version go to this link type java space iphone version it is displaying open jdk but not oracle jdk it is displaying open jdk but not oracle jdk if still it shows if it still it shows old version old version of java then then use below command use below command command to select 
to select Oracle Java. Oracle Java. Okay. So we use command saying alternatives, alternatives, iPhone, iPhone config, iPhone, iPhone config, Java. Okay. Use this command alternatives, iPhone, iPhone config. Java. Enter this command. Use sudo command to modify that options because we are using it as a normal user, right? Press enter. So it is showing Open JDK version is number one and Java JDK version number is two. So star means selected version. Then we want what? Two. Okay. So now type Java space iPhone version. You will see. You will see Oracle Java. Latest version which we have installed. So iPhone iPhone alternatives is a command to choose whatever the version we want. It means you can install multiple versions of Java in your mission. By using this command, you can set corresponding version. <coughs> okay, you are getting right. So next one, next one. So Java installation is successfully completed. Java installation path is successfully set. Next one, 